Hello, hello, Internet. It's Johnny Junkleguts, a.k.a. the top-notch gamer, a.k.a. the top-notch gamer. And I'm here to talk about this new Netflix show, Daredevil, that I just watched. Um, for those of you who don't know, Daredevil is a blind superhero who works as a lawyer in Hell's Kitchen. Uh, New York City. He is blind, but the accent that made him blind also gave him super senses that allowed him to see more clearly even, but in other ways. Like, he can hear someone's heartbeat to tell if they're lying. Also, he was trained how to do karate by this grumpy old man. So, he's got a lot of skills. Throughout the history of Marvel Comics, Daredevil has been, probably since the 80s, the most consistently, critically well-received comic that Marvel has put out. There have been great writing uh, stints by writers like Frank Miller, Mark Wade, uh, Ed Brubaker, Brian Michael Bendis. Some of those writers have written some pretty awful comics, but their work on Daredevil was pretty good. Um, and I think that's because Daredevil, the premise is very straightforward in a way. Um, it's very meat and potatoes, and so that kind of makes it hard to mess it up. And um, that meat and potatoes, down-to-earth vibe, I think this show captured it pretty good, almost to the point of being boring. Well, the first thing I'll say is that the guy that got playing Daredevil, he's a little... Cutie. He was looking good in those John Lennon red sunglasses, and you know he was he was pretty good. He sounded like Daredevil. Uh, he was a grown man, so I uh, I like that. One thing I noticed about this show almost right away was that the cinematography was really well done. It wasn't ambitious uh, cinematography, but it was very good. I was really enjoying myself watching the show, and so I started tweeting about it. And the actual Twitter for Daredevil, uh, that has like thousands of followers, like the Twitter for the TV show, started following me they were only following like 200 people. So I was like, oh, I better live tweet this whole bitch. So I'm over here texting and tweeting and twerking. And um, all of a sudden, into the show, completely unexpectedly, comes Rosario Dawson. I loved her in Sin City. I thought she did great work in Kids. Heard she was really good in that Eddie Murphy movie. Uh, and she just looked amazing. So I thought, I feel bad. I keep talking about physical looks when I'm talking about the show. And she was playing the night nurse, which is a character that when superheroes are hurt and they don't want to go to the hospital to get surgeries because they don't want people to know their secret identities. They go to the night nurse, and the night nurse heals them. So I tweeted out Rosario Dawson as the night nurse might give me a lightning bolt of heterosexuality. Because she was looking beautiful. And lo and behold, official Rosario Dawson herself on Twitter liked my tweet. So, at this point I'm just in full ass-kissing mode and I'm tweeting and texting and twerking all over the place and I tweet out another tweet to her, Rosario Dawson, loved ya since the kids days. That movie was like Rent, but the true-to-life version.
Unfortunately, what I had forgotten was that um, Rosario Dawson was actually in the movie Rent. So I'm over here throwing shade at a movie she was actually in without even knowing it. And then I feel awful once I realize what I did. I'm sending out all these apology treat, treats and tweets, and she doesn't even care. She's not responding to anything what I'm doing at this point. Rosario Dawson, I'm sorry. I think you did a great job in Daredevil. Sorry I made an ass out of myself on Twitter. So anyway, who else do we got on the show? We've got Deborah Ann Wall as Karen Page, Matt's assistant. But Deborah Ann Wall... Some of the script writing on that character was a little rough, was a little rough at times, but I thought she was actually one of the best actresses on the whole show. I was really feeling her feelings. I was feeling her feelings. Um, then, like I said, we've got Foggy Nelson. He was very good, very fine. Uh, but somewhere after like the first three or four episodes, things start to slow down a little bit. You start to get a little bored. You're like, is this show actually good at all? And then, in like the ninth episode, something really crazy and depressing happens that makes you realize maybe you care about this show more than you even, like, thought you did. And I like that. I like the idea that you could be caring about something more than you even know. Caring is good. And also in that episode, there's a crazy fight scene with a ninja, so that didn't really hurt um, anything. So, anyway, the show picks up right at the end. And the villain of the show is the Kingpin, classic Daredevil villain. He's like a mob boss type figure. Organized crime boss, so I don't think he's Italian. I don't really know what he's supposed to be. He's played by Vincent D'Onofrio, who does a pretty good job, gets better as the show goes on. He kind of, though, sometimes reminds me of when he played the bug in the human suit on Men in Black. Daredevil, this city belongs to me. Can I please have some water? So yeah, he was talking a little slow sometimes for me, but... Anyway, but this show is really seems to be a lot about... Um, crooked cops and manipulations of the law. So that's very timely, don't you think? There's a lot of good characters of color on this show and a couple of them get killed. Which, of course, puts this show in the bad trope of shows where the black friend dies, like in Forrest Gump, Enter the Dragon, like a million movies, basically. Um, but, you know, in 2015, after everything that's been going on in the news, the idea of a white person killing a black person, not that uh, unrealistic. Let's be uh, honest about that. So, very relevant, in a way. It's also one of those shows where... It's one of those shows... Or whenever someone's walking to the car, you think, you get nervous. When it, whenever someone's walking to the car, you get nervous. You're like, oh no, is he going to get in the car? Is he going to get attacked before he gets in the car? Is he going to drive away? One thing I will say is that once he finally gets in the Daredevil costume, it's a little goofy. And it wouldn't seem goofy on other shows like Flash and Arrow, because those shows, they're, they're good shows. But they are goofy. And this show was not that goofy, uh, which I liked. I mean, honestly, you know, this wasn't a great show, but it was a good show. I wish that this was like the standard for superhero media, much in the way that I wish The Hunger Games was the standard for science fiction films. Because I don't think The Hunger Games are at, off the walls amazing, but I think they're good. But they're sort of the best science fiction movies coming out right now. But, you know, it was good. Blind is justice. Fear is nothing. Man without fear. What more could you want? 